Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are beginning by approaching the S4 stage with our main mission here and we are currently 600 meters away and closing. Of course this is going to be a docking procedure so I'm not probably going to be talking too much while I try and get this right. Hopefully we can get this right. Uh, of course it was a bit of a struggle last time but I'm fresh, I am uh, ready to go and we're just starting out so hopefully I don't mess this up. Alright, so I'll continue recording but I probably won't say too much. Uh oh. We don't actually have a connection with the S4 stage. It has no connection right now. It's got its antennae out. We just must be in a particularly bad location. We'll have to have the main mission hold off until we can get communication with this. I don't know why it doesn't have communication. Electric charge is fine. Um, it's got enough antennae so it could communicate with the Astrotug, but that's not the ideal communication partner. Um, it probably. I, I wonder why this TigerSat probe is non-communicative. It seems to be in. A, maybe it's a spent stage instead of something actually communicating. Um, answer two is there. This is TigerSat. Yeah, I guess uh, that's the spend stage for TigerSat. Mm. Trinket there. Sort of built this whole thing haphazardly, after all. So, it's not really a good communication system. But so far, we haven't had really big gaps before. It won't, we probably won't pick up that location, but it should pick up this location here in South Africa. There we go. We've got communication now. Crisis averted. I'm somewhat comforted by this uh, RCS balance now. Uh, over the weekend on Sunday I tried an N1 moon mission. So I had the N1 launcher that I had built for the rocket profile series and then I used uh, you know a Soyuz capsule. I think they were Raider Nix parts. Uh, for the LK lander and the uh, appropriate Soyuz module for the lunar mission, the Soviet lunar mission. And th that RCS is not very well balanced at all, uh, especially on the lander, but also on the Soyuz capsule, surprisingly. I mean, of course, it's com uh, computer controlled, so the computer could handle it, but it's a little bit hard for me to handle it. It's not really symmetric around the center of mass or anything like that. So this is actually much better <laughs> so hopefully this moon mission will I mean that one went okay eventually except the capsule didn't have enough uh, heat shielding so I'll have to fix that that's a tough thing to gauge they keep uh, well I mean they've updated the heat shielding practically every time they updated the realism overhaul has changed a lot since you know I started playing realism overhaul too um, it used to be deadly re-entry now it's real heat and every time the the characteristics seem different and uh, there are different numbers in the configuration files to determine the heating so it's only one way to find out whether you've got a good enough heat shield unless it says lunar region of course but this was specifically for that capsule Okay, we have just lost connection with this side again, which is peculiar because you'd think that that could relay it, but I guess the Kelly module also doesn't have any connection. So we're going to switch which side we're going to be doing the docking with. We're going to have this hold the target, and we'll, let's just assume that that was pre-programmed that when it lost, loses connection, it'll just hold the target orientation. That seems like a good way to program a thing, by the way. It would be a smart programming thing. And we will proceed. Once it settles down, we'll uh, turn on SAS instead and then proceed with the other side. Right now, we have basically zero relative velocity. Yeah, we're going millimeters per second. OK, I think I'm just going to have to wait until there is communication, because that thing is drifting a little bit. And it's making it a little bit hard here. Okay, come on, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, that was so horrible. 
Oh, that was horrible. Ah, it took forever, too. All right, RCS off. Let's fuel this bit back up again. All right. That leaves us for low, very low fuel there. We can't really do much for this tank. Let's just uh, make sure that this gets locked back up again. Because that's our return uh, launch fuel from the surface. Okay. Well, now we control from here. 3,028. Well, I guess that'll have to be good enough. Let's plot for the moon, finally. All right, we have our plot for the moon, 3,133.5, which means it's more than we have in this stage, so that's unfortunate. But let's get to it. There's no choice now. Some of the hydrogen drain might be from the fuel cell. Let me double check that. That one's inactive. This one's running, so some is from the fuel cell. Okay, let's go. We'll have seven minutes with these engines, and then we'll have to finish the burn with the Lunar Gemini engines again. It's still quite a dodgy mission. We are trying to land on the engine bells on the Asterisk engines down here. No landing legs. We probably ought to be ready to abort in case that idea was a bad one. I believe right now the electric charge is good enough that I can turn off the running fuel cell. Yep. And since these solar panels are helping with our power situation, I suppose we'll keep this stage attached. No, I guess we can't, because we, we're going to finish the burn with those. If we could finish the burn with this stage, we could keep this stage attached, but as it is, we can't. Okay, we've passed the maneuver node, and it looks like we might be a little bit behind. In other words, we started the burn a little bit too late, but not too far off. I'm pumping the Arizina N204 from here into this tank now. Oh, I better remember to lock the hydrogen and oxygen, otherwise it might take some. Actually, we might want to top off our hydrogen and oxygen while we're at it. Okay, that's the end of the transfer stage. There is no more fuel remaining. Uh, though I guess we could transfer electric charge insofar as we have room for electric charge. So that's that. All right, uh, let us decouple. Oh, uh, well, let's make sure we control from here now and undock. Okay, and we will unlock these fuels. Uh, push away, actually. And we are turning. I will activate our advanced Gemini lander engines. Then see if that helps things. All right, let's see what the actual situation is. As we complete this burn, Let's hope we have enough fuel left over in this stage. It not only has to get us into orbit around the moon, but then bring us back home. Okay, here we go. We are not going for a free return trajectory. Uh, we could easily put ourselves on one if we so choose. In fact, I might even go this way around instead of backwards, which is the free return direction. So not a figure eight, maybe. Actually, this is a good time to do a comparison. 
Now, of course, we have an inclination either way. But let's see how much it takes to get into orbit from this direction and how much it does from the opposite direction. Now, we had the periapsis there set at 92, so let's keep that consistent. You want a nice circular orbit, sort of. Uh, about 800, call it uh, 797. And what if right now we moved on to the other side of the moon? Doesn't actually cost that much to switch sides, as you can see. 3.6. Though we'll have more inclination on that side. So we're over there. And we try to make orbit. Relatively circular sort of thing. And that would cost 801. So it's a difference of a little bit. Um, we're talking about 4 meters per second when you include the 3 meters per second to get onto the other side. But no practical difference really. So we'll do this maneuver. Well, our moon periapsis is a little bit close right now. We happen to be in a good direction to push away. So let's do that. When I added the hydrogen in, I didn't really take into account boil off. So we've lost a lot of hydrogen with relation to our oxygen so far. The date is December 25th, 1968. Sort of a, a memorable date in Apollo history as well. But on that one, they were just uh, in orbit around the moon. We're doing a little bit more this time. We skipped that part. Okay, ignition. We will attempt to make orbit around the moon. The hope is that there's still enough fuel remaining so that this can bring us back. Not 100% sure about that. Okay, 94 by 85 kilometers. And I'm going to turn that off, SAS back on. Uh, we read 269 meters per second left in this stage, but of course that's carrying this whole load here. This will be gone when we finally need to go back home. This won't be completely gone, but most of its fuel will be gone. So hopefully this 269 translates into a number that allows us to go home, but right now I actually don't know. So on that note, uh, let's... Um, this is all independent. It's got its communications out. Uh, it has electric charge. It has electric charge. Not a lot, but it has. Okay, well, I'm going to unlock these fuels. And there's nothing in here that we need to take with us. Um, there's hydrogen and oxygen for the fuel cells there. I will unlock the fuel cell fuel here so that our fuel cells will keep, keep running and I will turn on our second fuel cell. Okay. Alright, let's decouple. And we have tested that these engines do work even with that decoupler there. I don't have a stack separator. For some reason there is no stack separator in the separator thing. I don't know whether that's a realism overhaul thing. I, I didn't realize stack separators were not realistic. Or, um, or maybe it's something in the tech tree. So we'll have to take a look at that later. But right now we'll focus on this. Um, I don't know how the actual staging works there. So I'm going to activate the engines like this. This could be tricky. Those aren't really proper lander engines. So right around here, we're going to do an initial descent burn. I guess landing in this crater will be good. This will be good. So we'll have that sort of descent path right there. That seems reasonable. And 
I really need surface information. It occurs to me that this is a little bit unbalanced as far as RCS down there, so I'm going to unlock this RCS fuel here to help add balance, and then we'll just move fuel into that later. Okay, electric charge is replenishing. Let's reorient. You know, with the decoupler down there, I don't know if we'll balance properly. Yeah, we're supposed to balance on the engine bells, but with the decoupler there, we're sort of in trouble, aren't we? Hmm. Yep, didn't think about that. Didn't think about that. There's a dodgy, dodgy little effort here. Let's extend our lander legs. In a show of optimism, you know. Now, our descent burn is only six minutes, much less than for the Apollo mission. So we have a good TWR to work with. Let's make sure we're uh, like six minutes to this location here, right in the middle of that crater. And then I think it'd be a good time to start burning. Yeah, well, we should come down there somewhere. The RCS still evidently does not have very good control. But while the engines are on, the gimbling should be helping. Apparently not. Maybe the gimbling is obstructed by this decoupler. I should have put like an additional decoupler on this structural part or something. A decoupler for the decoupler. I think somebody suggested something similar in the comments. But flipping one of the decouplers around to make a um, what you got uh, separator. So one decoupler one way, the other decoupler the other way. It makes sense. And it would have been better than this. I feel like it's just uh, okay. I, I'll I'll take control. Maybe we've been here before. Yeah, it's it was smart ASS being horrible. That's all. I don't think these throttle. That's why they're not very good lander engines. Yeah, they don't. On the bright side, if uh, we are in a pinch because of the lack of lander legs and that decoupler there. We can get off the ground in a hurry with these engines. We'll still have some fuel left. I really wanted the dark part of the crater, which should be pretty flat. Uh, we're currently aimed for it, but as we slow down, that'll pull our orbit in, and we might hit that hill, for instance. Maybe we can aim for this area here instead. I just don't want to be on a cliff. Well, we're going to end up here. Hope this is an interesting place for science. Analyze telemetry. Ah, we can get some uh, science. Telemetry analysis just above Moon's major craters. Why not? Crew report. Yes. Well, once the one finishes transmitting, I'll transmit this as well. Not as much science as we should be getting if we can actually land this safely and it doesn't tip over or anything. We all know the risks here. There's no, uh... There's no illusion that we are going to be doing this perfectly safely right now. We did take a route, I mean, instead of building a big Saturn V, we did these smaller rockets, not even an N1. I mean, N1 had, had 30 of the engines that we used on the first stage. We only used 18 altogether. Well, I think we should just go down now. Obviously way high on this pass, but that was because I wasn't entirely sure about the thrust-to-weight ratio effect. 
Yeah, yeah, every lander you have to practice with a little bit. At least there aren't limited ignitions on these Asterisk engines. But we do have to sell the fuel down, so that's a thing. Minimizing horizontal velocity would be imperative as far as keeping this balanced. We seem to have a lot of TWR. But I don't believe that suicide burn countdown for a second. I'm pretty sure we would crash before that ran out. I use a lot of ignitions because I don't have throttling. Okay, we saw that. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. Oh, fudge. Well, this is what we were afraid of. Uh, well, let's do some science first, right? Well, I don't know if it's safe to EVA them. I only recently found out that EVA packs aren't very good in Realism Overhaul. Um, let me turn RCS off temporarily. Let me retract solar panels so they don't get broken, or hopefully don't get broken. Well, how is it even moving right now? There's no RCS. Oh, we've got some residual roll here. That's not helpful for trying to bring them back out. At least the train is flat. Well, anyway, uh, crew report. Okay, well, 20 signs for that. Joan is the pilot. I think we'll have the engineer get out and try and do things. Does this count as flying over? EVA report in space near the moon. Okay. Outright. Oh, uh, well, we can keep that in board. Transmit. I'm not entirely sure they're going to survive this. So this is why, of course, NASA waited until they had landing legs. Very important. Saw a video of the test of the landing legs, by the way. That, that is a thing. Uh, for some reason, uh, that stopped transmitting ahead of actually finishing. So hold on, let me EVA him and do that again. Keep the experiment in board. I'll store that. And uh, if I check that, I bet I didn't get, I didn't even get any science for it. So uh, we probably uh, lost communication. Okay, well, let's try EVA Allen and hopefully you'll be able to climb back up again. Uh, take surface sample. Keep. EVA report. Keep. Um, definitely not toggle EVA suit. But apparently I can't fl plant flags yet. I haven't unlocked that. Shoot. 
Well, anyway, as long as we got the rocks, it counts, right? Okay, he's... Can't climb. And as expected, the jetpacks aren't very good. Hmm. Can you climb? Climb? Maybe we can roll those ladders towards him. No, not really. It looks like we're sort of stuck in this basic orientation. Um, if we could roll the hatch to him, that'd be great too. Come on, come on, come on. There's not much climbable on this, is there? And the pod keeps spinning around. Actually, maybe he could knock the pod so that it stops spinning. Right. No, it's spinning the other way now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh oh, Moonquake. And he's flopped and there's this that, that that that's not me that that was alter uh, other glitching oh great if only the jetpacks eva packs worked like they do in stock oh wait a glitch has led us to oh 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 Ah, uh, uh, no, don't don't fall off. Okay. Um Yeah, uh that 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 wasn't intentional. That was a glitch, I think. But now we're at the mercy of these things. Okay. Crew hatch over there. Man, how am I supposed to board? Oh, board, board, board. Well, okay. Well, that's one thing. And now we have to sort of get off of the surface. Now we went uh, prograde around instead of retrograde. Yeah, so we go 90 degrees. Um, F5. <laughs> In fact, uh, maybe I should uh, zip up the save file. Uh, I'll, I'll Alt F5. Uh, Joan and Alan, Alan, on the moon. It always comes to this in Kerbal, doesn't it? Okay, here we go. Oh, bugger. Well, that was sort of expected. We will have to take a different tact. F9. Can't quick load in this scenario. Well, I've got news for you. I'm gonna load that anyway. This is a special situation, folks. It's full disclosure. I'm showing you that I'm doing it. Okay, here we are again. And... I don't know, maybe the idea is to just try and use this stage. Uh, ahead of that idea, I'm going to stage a decoupler and these at the same time. We appear to be sort of stuck in a position. Not entirely surprising. Uh, it would be helpful if this part was heavier, but I don't necessarily want to pump this fuel into the tail to do that. RCS-wise, we can't really rock ourselves into a better orientation either. Maybe it would be best to just use this portion. Let me make sure everything is fueled up as much as possible. I don't know. Now, there are a number of ways we could approach this. But on this one, I'm going to unlock these, decouple. Let, let, let's see what happens when we decouple. I have no idea, really. 
Okay, that happens. Uh, we might lose the solar panels this way. Okay. Mm. These should have been activated. They do, they weren't. I don't like the fact that it is tilting down. Yeah, that's not going to help anything. Yeah, obviously not. Hmm. Well, so we're going to have to keep that lower stage attached. There's no way this is going to work right. But I'm not really seeing how the other way is going to work right either. I think we're in trouble. Okay, well, it all sort of comes down to just a little bit of tilt. We could try and use this hill judiciously if we could get there safely, you know, if. Let's see. RCS on. Uh, let's pump the fuel back up into this upper tank as well. Okay, so let's try and turn over in that direction and not go too fast. Turning. Oh, we tumbled actually. I thought that would be difficult to do. Um right well that didn't work great but we learned we could do something that we couldn't do before <laughs> oh we need to settle it down doesn't make it easy. Only two engines? Okay. Oh. Too fast. Noble effort. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, here we are again. I'm gonna try and go up the hill again. We'll try and keep our velocity down and be careful about it, but this will be the last time. And then I have a few options. Um, obviously, uh, entailing some shenanigans. First of all, um, I did zip up the save after docking around Earth. So if we want to, we can make this an Apollo 10 kind of mission, uh, where we get into orbit around the moon and we get close to landing but don't actually land the lander and then we dump this part and then we proceed up on ascent with this and then we continue the mission like that and then we can check whether we actually have enough fuel to return home that would be important um, or I might come up with some other solution to rescue these guys uh, which would be interesting but I don't think I have enough time uh, taking a look at the life support situation, which for some reason isn't here. Let's get that up. Uh, 7 days of food, 12 days of water, 8 days of oxygen. Now, I don't think there's any way I can build a rocket that quickly, and we don't really have anything in orbit. Uh, even though we had the leftovers from the failed mission, including uh, transfer stage and such, we don't really have the tools to land something here to bring them back home. Uh, much less lander legs, for instance. So anyway, let's try this again. Mm, let's 
that's getting the wrong way. I want to go up. Oh, fudge. I want to go up that slope, darn it. Well, this is very inconvenient. Alright, so unless I come up with some other solution, we've got this problem. Potential trage tragedy. I don't think I'm going to let Joan and Alan die here. Either we're going to revert and I'm going to allow myself to do an Apollo 10 mission first, which given the given the possibilities seems like a likely idea. I don't normally revert these missions, but this is too sad to allow to happen, right? So yeah, that might be what we do in the next episode, and then we'll test the way back and everything, which we haven't really tested before because uh, remember, it didn't allow us to do an uncrewed test of the Nico 944. So, oh, well, at least you can't have an uncrewed Gemini cabin on the top of the rocket and still make it work. So I had that problem. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll consider this. And I'll have to come back to you with what I feel would be the best way to go. All right. So, on, on this note, I'll have to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.